A long time ago, in a galaxy very near to here, there was a sock. His name was Malthus, Thomas Malthus. Born in 1766, Malthus emerged as a prominent thinker amidst the Enlightenment with the 1798 publication of his work, an essay on the principle of population as it affects the future improvement of society, with remarks on the speculations of Mr. Godwin, M. Condorcet, and other writers. Not only was the title a mouthful to say, but what the claims in the essay were, were, well, wild. <clears throat> there are two fixed laws of nature. Food is necessary to the existence of man, and passion between the sexes will always be passionate. Uh, how is this a wild claim? Consequently, population control is an absolute necessity. Ah, uh, so that's the wild claim. Tommy boy, how do you figure that? Mm. Since the power of the population is indefinitely greater than the power in the earth to produce substance for man to survive upon, we have two options. Either we control our population ourselves, or we let nature play its cards against humanity. Ah, uh, not those, the other ones. The Population Bomb. The what? That's the name of my new book. Weren't you listening? You're supposed to be my publicist. <sighs> I guess that's the danger of this single-shot camera film, where all non-sock puppet characters are not pictured. Most definitely. You're useless. This is Paul Ehrlich, a professor of population studies and biological studies at Stanford University. The year is 1968, and he's just written a book called The Population Bomb. In the book, he explains that... Since some minimum of 10 million people will starve to death each year in the 1970s, the only solution left to save humanity is population control. Basically, he's a modern version of Malthus, which means he actually thinks I'm useless. Mm, thank you for understanding the true nuances of my work. Of course, Paul. Anything for you. Oh, that's what they always say when they really should be doing anything for biodiversity and the good of planet Earth. That's the problem with humans these days. We always think about ourselves, and in doing so, we trade away our future and the future sustainability of our planet. This guy's crazy. Like making tin foil hats crazy. So sure, like, humans can suck sometimes. Why else do you think we would come up with inventions like the slap trap, and diet water. But there's a ton of redeemable things about our species. We have markets and economics, and that allows us to treat us what we find to be valuable. And we have innovation, human ingenuity, which allows us to discover new substitutes if scarcity ever occurs. If scarcity ever occurs. Say, I wonder if I can make money off this guy. Perhaps I should go write an article or something. That would be the ultimate resource for this sort of wager. That was Julian Simon, an economics professor at the University of Illinois. He is going to write an article for Science Magazine called Resources, Population, Environment, an Oversupply of False Bad News. And that article is going to tick Ehrlich off. In this article, Simon claimed that the bad news about population growth, natural resources, and the environment are published widely in the face of contradictory evidence. The scarcity of natural resources was decreasing, and the aggregate data still showed no long-run negative effects for population growth upon the standard of living. This is why we can't have nice things. The Malthusians just don't believe in that. Your article was wrong, and it promotes dangerous mindsets regarding resource scarcity. There is no other way to handle this. I challenge you to a duel. Uh, we can't duel. We don't have hands. We are socks. Animated by hands. Ah, 
Also, it's the 1980s. Duels are rather antiquated. Why don't we make a bet instead? What sort of bet? You choose five commodities, any five commodities, and I'll invest a hundred thousand dollars. Actually, wait, I'm too poor. I'll invest a thousand dollars, two hundred in each of those commodities. We'll check back on them in like ten years. If the real price has gone up, that could be evidence for growing resource scarcity and an actual impending population bomb. But if the prices go down, I think that's proof of human ingenuity in the face of limits. Sounds like an easy way to make money. Let's do it. But was this an easy way to make some cash? Alec and his fellow crew of modern Malthusians selected chrome, copper, tin, nickel, and tungsten in quantities worth two hundred dollars in October nineteen eighty, for a net total of one thousand dollars in commodities. Simon would purchase the commodities and sell the agreed-upon quantities of metal to Alec and his friends ten years later at the nineteen eighties prices. If the combined prices of acquiring the metals a decade later turned out to be higher than a thousand dollars, Mr. Simon would pay the difference. But if the prices fell, Ehrlich would make that payment. Paul, how are you feeling about this wager? I feel pretty good. The numbers are in my favor. You know, we as humans use approximately forty percent of the Earth's land to farm food, and that destroys the habitats of thousands of other species. We use up all these minerals as we accept hypercapitalism as a religion. We are on track to destroy the biodiversity necessary to preserve our delicate ecosystem and use up the resources that we so heavily rely on. If we don't use population control, we will simply be setting ourselves up to be pared down by the natural selection of famine and other forms of resource scarcity. Julian, do you have something to say? My dear friend Tin Hat, I mean Paul, I think you're mistaken because we have so much technology that allows us to take care of our human consumption. We feed more people per square foot due to our species' ingenuity. A population bomb is nonsense. It's not resource scarcity. It's a resource scare. Mostly, you scaring people. Um, I think you still miss my point. Limits exist, and this sort of technology ultimately creates more pressure on the environment because the greater technology-induced viability of humankind erodes natural constraints that, for centuries, maintained biological diversity and prevented environmental imbalance. Thus, we are on our way to detonating the population bomb. That's nice you think that, but luckily we have a bet that can help us solve this question. The year is 1990. The world population has risen by 800 million, but the cost of Alex's precious metals have fallen. The larger population does not seem to inherently create a higher level of resource scarcity. Alex must accept defeat and pay his dues. Enclosed within the envelope is a check for $576. And seven cents, paid to the order of the economist Julian Simon. Unfortunately for Ehrlich, if the deadline of the wager had been extended to the year 2011, he would have won, big time. What? Nothing. <laughs>